learn fit for that again. So I come uh, with another series of video in which I am going to teach how to uh, do correct kicks. So this video is all about roundhouse kick. That is the Mawashi game in Kodokan Karate. So and this is. Hello guys, my name is Ankit Raha, 4Q, and I am here to help my senpai in this video. So as you know who he is, uh, he has been there with me uh, a lot of times before too. And in, in many other videos, so today he is going to help me. And uh, uh, today we are going to learn very important elements of kicking. I mean, kicking with roundhouse kick, that is uh, the proper kicking leg alignment, the lower leg alignments, the correct way of kicking, the traditional kicking versus a sports kicking, uh, the effective kicking, and uh, also the last but not the least, the uh, wet to kick. Which position that means lower body, middle body, or upper body. So, with all the topics we are going to cover in this video. So, without wasting any time, let's get started. So, our first uh, kick to do a good kick, a good roundhouse kick or an awashi is proper leg alignment. Uh, by the leg of kicking, so I'll just show how to do it. So he hold the bell for me. So generally when I kick, I kick uh, in a bit of traditional plus fourth style to maximize the effort, effect, effectively. Uh, so the power can be a little bit like this. Now we are going to learn how did I create so much power. The first thing we are going to know is how our kicking leg alignment shall be. Uh, I'll show it briefly. So generally, uh, when we do traditional karate, our teachers teach us to lift our knee like this, sideways. Then at first we lift it like this, take it to the position and kick with our ball of the foot and in sports style we don't do it like this we at first lift it like a migrate keeping our leg foot straight and then kick this is sports style but we will mix both of them to create a perfect round of kick not perfect but close to perfect so that is we are going to use our hip rather than Lifting our knee, right? That's for basic, that's for beginners. So we'll move a bit of advanced level. We will not also do it like this, full straight. But the leg shall come from the diagonal pathway of the round kick, like this. This diagonal pathway. So one, two, down. And I'll show it. Uh, step by step, while doing on it. See, this is a traditional one where I hit with the ball of the foot, and this is a sports one. This is a sports one, sports one. Only that one. That's that one. And traditional ball of the foot. And the real roundhouse kick that is uh, super effective in all situations are. Taking a diagonal pathway using both traditional and sports and creating your own way of kicking. The mom, I mean the roundhouse. So one, two. We are just uh, moving our heel so fast from that moment. We are taking our heel like this and suddenly we are just moving our heel and thrusting the heel like. Tip 2 we are going to learn the lower leg alignment. That is the 
the most vital part of the whole eating journey. So let us see how uh, what am I speaking about. So we'll hold it like that. So so from that angle, when I was thinking, it was very powerful. I mean, uh, of course, you all cannot know how powerful it is until and unless you experience it while holding the pad. But it is powerful, a bit of powerful. I don't know uh, what's the parameter to measure that, but still. So the lower leg alignment is quite important, very important. Because I cannot hit powerful kicks without manipulating my lower leg. So let us see very closely. If I hit it like this, and my lower leg is on the same position, lower foot is on the same position. Okay. I will not be able to generate the power because when my lower leg, when my lower foot opens, my hip, hip gets more room to move. So if it does not open, my hip is not getting room to kick. But if it opens, if it opens, my hip will get a whole different room and so that I can charge my kick more. So let us see how to do that. At first, we are going to move our leg like one. Not like, not at first we will not lift the knee. We will not lift the knee. We will at first move the leg like one. Odd one. So one. Now two. Back. One. One. So it is very important to manipulate your lower leg. One, one and two. <laughs> so that was our second tip to do a good roundhouse kick. So let us move on to the next tip. The third one is not exactly a, a tip but a uh, suggestion. So many of you ask that whether uh, we should do traditional kicks or sport kick or what kind of kick should we do or should I do. So let us see what. So at first, uh, no. at first we need to know why why should we not why should we do traditional kick or not do why should we do sport kick or not do and why should we go off for more effective kicks. The first thing is. Uh, we need to understand that traditional karate and traditional way of kicking are just to clear our fundamental basics and our overall infrastructure. If we don't learn that, we will not evolve. And we, if we have learned that, we need to evolve. The first thing is this. The second thing is the sports mama shikiri. We need to ignore that for a moment. That's not for saying combat. That is for sports karate. Where you cannot touch. You have to just do it for 3 cm gap. So we are leaving that away. And the second is effective karate. I mean, I mean effective kick. So, as you can see, I have shown the level of effective kicks. So we don't do it with our, uh, for example, in the hold up back for me. In traditional, as we know, we do with the ball of our foot like this. But everyone, just imagine. Sorry. Imagine for a moment if we do with the ball of the foot. And somehow it is stuck, then our ball of the foot is weaker than our shin. This is the ball of the foot, and this is our shin. Of course, the shin is stronger than the ball of the foot. In most of the cases, if we use our ball of the foot, we will, we will be injured. Okay, we cannot use it for the self defense, we cannot use it in the full com uh, combat sports because uh, there we need more thrust power and more. Uh, Tensile strength. Uh, you know what I mean by tensile strength. When I say tensile strength, that means that when I do a kick, I don't get hurt. The one I am doing, the, he or she gets hurt. Gets hurt. So we need to keep that in mind. That traditional kicks are good, but up to a certain limit. If we use that all the time, we are going to seriously injure ourselves. Instead, I'll just show you the difference of traditional kicking and normal uh, effective kicking. So this is the traditional kick, doing, using the ball of the foot. Of course, sometimes it's good. Like one, a two. Now this is the effective kicking. We can do anywhere, any body part, to our opponent, up of our opponent. So let us see. Like one, two, three. So the kick. 
link I just showed, the effective ones. You can search it anywhere, globally, anywhere. In any any form of martial art or full combat sport, it can be mixed martial art, it can be Muay Thai, it can be kickboxing. All of them, including karatekas from old era, who, who were extremely powerful in Kubite and leg techniques, they all use the kick that I just showed. Okay, so let us move to the next tip. Since it's our fourth suggestion or you can say tip, uh, here we will know whether we should pull back our kick or not, and when to pull back and when not. So let us just see with an example. So what we mean by pull back? So in traditional karate and in sports karate, a pull back means after you kick, you pull, you uh, pull back your leg like one two. This is called a pull back. Okay. So how? How certain should be pulled back? Okay, so <clears throat> we all know that in traditional uh, current current generation traditional and sports kumite pull back is very important. Without pull back, we are not going to get any point. If I kick someone like this in a competition, in a competition, if I kick someone like this and I don't pull back, I will never get a point. <clears throat> so for the sake of the point, we can pull back. But in general. Pulling back a kick is not healthy for our knees. You can search anywhere. I'll uh, put the link of uh, the documents and the things from the I all I have all known this in the description. You all may read it from there. But irregular pullbacks like one, two. This is not needed for our kicks. This is extremely unneeded. What is needed for our kick is when we do it. Our body reacts to the thrust with a normal body natural pullback. That is called the real pullback. This is not the real pullback. This is not the real pullback. This is we are putting effort into it while pulling the kick back. That is not healthy for our knees. And the thing which is healthy for our knees is to let the body decide the natural movement for our leg. Like what? Two. See our my body, my leg is reacting. And it is doing a natural pullback. Rather than doing like this, this my body is reacting like this and this. So it is very essential to understand when we should pull back or when we should not. I know many of the traditional karate class and sports karate class shall argue with me, or of course I am too junior to say these things. But I am confident with my statement and things. I do mawashi gedi and I have been doing mawashi gedi from many years, many years. Of course, it's more than 15 years I have been practicing mawashi gedi. My father too, who is a fifth gen black belt under JK, and I am a third gen black belt under JK. So I know what I am saying, and that's it. Coming to the last topic and the last tip. So uh, the tip is about where should we keep. So he, I'm sorry for him not wearing the dress. It's a rainy season and his dress is still uh, spilled with water in his home. So he came in a normal informal dress and let us manage it for this video. Just so he will uh, stand in a immediate posture for me. So the question is where should we kick? Should we kick in Gelan? Should we kick in Sudan? Or should we kick in Jodan? By the way, let me say, Geda means lower kick, Chuda means the kick that are associated with uh, stomach level or uh, spine level, back or front. And Joda means face level or head level. So, where should be often kick? With my, uh, with my level, level of knowledge, if it is for point, if it is for uh, competition. It's okay if you kick in the stomach or back of the, uh, I mean back. But it is not okay if you are doing a full combat or for self defense. Of course, always for the self defense, you need to kick in lower level, like one, this, or this. Because lower level of most of the people who will assault you or who will come for you, <coughs> lower level is the most delicate place where you can kick. And most effective kicks, kicks were made to be at lower level. 
you go for migrating that is front kick lower level on the knee you go for round house kick then mama she is for lower level you go for cross kick that is take home is for lower level like one or like this two so kicks were made for lower level so most of the time you must always aim for the lower kicks all the to exhaust the opponent's leg so that he cannot take a correct posture and if he doesn't take a correct posture you can go and hit and you can hit him a lot of time my second condition is to kick on the higher level either lower or higher either lower or higher no kicks in the middle there are certain reasons why you shouldn't uh, do it in the middle the first reason is opponent's elbow if you are really going to kick hard and he pinches his elbow like this you are really going to hurt your shin okay and same for stomach level if you are going to do it like his fist his fist is right here and if you are going to kick it and somehow he manages to deflect the kick you will get really injured so either on the lower lower kicks both leg allowed or higher level kick then a face kick a head kick or face kick with the same principle of course i am showing it slow that's why i am doing a good pull back but when you do it powerful and fast you don't do pull backs you don't do pull back you just thrust your leg and uh, leave it like a whole timber like one and do it in a pull back for his safety then two then three then four five six that's the way how you should that's the way how you should practice aiming and that's the place where you must really kick avoid to run and back aim for lower kicks and higher kicks if of course if you have back black back flexibility lower kicks are way better options than you if someone is taller than you lower kicks are the best option some someone shorter than you lower kicks are the best option for any kind of fights which you are up against or fight good fighters you are, which you are up against lower kicks are the best option do not go for stomach kicks or back kicks always aim for lower kicks or head kicks i hope you all have liked this video uh, if so then do like share and subscribe to my channel and wait for the next video next video is going to uh, be about the front kick or if possible the side side thrust kick so i have covered many things in this video that may be violating many rules in shotokan karate but we all need to evolve as we know the journey in our youtube is not based on any particular style it's based on the correct form of karate so i'm sh showing the correct form of self defense the true form of karate the true form of kicking everything that i have learned uh, from my father uh, and i have been uh, giving that to all of my youtube mates and everyone uh, we have reached 1200 subscribers in the youtube thank you so much for all these guys uh, i hope we grow more together uh, in, in our this journey till then us see you in the next video